We're now going to take a look at the basics of IP protocols. Now we've talked about TCP and UDP which reside at the transport layer. We're also going to talk about the Internet Protocol or IP family of protocols. The reason we want to talk about primarily these three protocol sets is that throughout your traffic and packet analysis, those three protocols are primarily what you're going to be looking at for the most part on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the IP protocol family resides at layer 3 of the OSI model, which is the network layer, or if you prefer, at the Internet layer of the TCP IP stack. Now, what does IP do? Well, we know from basic networking that IP is responsible for routing and logical addressing. It uses IP addresses or internet protocol addresses such as 134.62.136.40 for example instead of MAC or hardware addresses. That's what layer 2 does. It uses MAC addresses. IP uses IP addresses. Now it's responsible for routing in that when a host needs to communicate with another host if it's on the same or local network IP takes care of that. If it's not, then IP sends that information or traffic to what's called a default gateway. That way that router or default gateway is responsible for taking care of it from that point out and sending it to another network. Now because all IP does is routing and logical addressing, it's not a heavy protocol. There's not a lot of overhead to it. So it doesn't have any correction mechanisms or flow control capabilities built in. It pretty much relies on other protocols for that. So if a packet gets lost in the process or gets dropped, the, uh, a higher level protocol such as TCP has to request that data to come back. IP doesn't take care of it. As far as it knows, it's just sending data, sending data, and sending data. It may not know that some of the data it is sending was requested again from the TCP layer above it. Now, like UDP, IP is connectionless and unreliable. It does not establish a connection. It doesn't require like a three-way handshake like TCP does. Uh, so it doesn't establish a connection and it's unreliable. It does not care whether the data gets there or not. Now, IP does provide a checksum for the packet headers only. It does not provide that checksum for the data. And that's to see if the packet headers have been damaged or are in error. Now, it will discard any packet headers that have errors but it does not notify the receiving computer that it has done that and it does not correct any errors. Now IP also provides for packet reassembly if the packet is fragmented. What may happen is when the sending and receiving computer are communicating there is a maximum transmission unit size established that both can handle. Now if for some reason the packet exceeds that MTU size IP will fragment that packet into smaller units, smaller packets, and it will use fragmentation flags to signal, hey, this, this is the beginning of a fragmented packet. And it will use offsets to determine which order the packets need to be reassembled when they're put back together on the receiving end. So IP does do that. Now a few of the protocols that are included in the IP family, and we're going to talk about some of them more in depth, are IP, the Internet Protocol itself, responsible for routing uh, and logical addressing. Then we also have ICMP, or the Internet Control Message Protocol. Most of you are familiar with ICMP uh, through the ping command. If you've done a ping, you've sent uh, an ICMP uh, message to another computer and received one back, a ping, then you've used ICMP before. It's basically used for maintenance type of tasks and to determine connections. Uh, IGMP, the Internet Group Messaging Protocol, is another protocol found at IP and it's used for uh, multicast messaging to uh, groups of hosts on a network. Now IPsec or IP security is a uh, protocol that's used to encrypt packets and to sign and authenticate packets that are sent from two hosts on the same network or even across uh, internetworks across the internet for example. It's widely used in VPNs and again it provides for encryption and authentication of packets. We're going to talk about all these a little bit more in depth as we go, and we'll see some examples of some of them as well.